If you've ever played any sort of video game, and suddenly, without even noticing the clock, a few hours passed, then it is likely because of one or more of the four major human needs that gaming fulfills for us. As Cam Edair from the awesome brand Game Quitters puts it, those four needs are social, constant measurable growth, challenge, and temporary escape. If you'd like to be engaged in your content the same way that you were engaged with this video game, using any of those to your advantage by satisfying them through your production process may help you. But I wanted to discuss just one of those for now, and that is constant measurable growth, perhaps with sprinkles of challenge. Let's say you've set a goal of 10,000 views in one month after a publication of a video. You can then say you failed if you get 9,000 views and that you have succeeded if you get 11,000 views. Not so if you initially said you want to have your video go viral. What is viral? A million views? Two million? In a month? A year? Don't fall for the vague, I want more views mentality. Define a clear number and time for you to reach that number. When you do that, it becomes a sort of a game, where the number becomes your constant measurable growth indicator. For example, instead of just monitoring my email subscriptions and form visits, I have defined a goal of at least one subscriber and four form views from the content piece you're now watching, from the video and blog post combined. That is, in the two-week period after the last out of the content goes live. Now, I'll definitely know if I succeeded or failed and will be able to improve the content accordingly. So, what is your clearly numerically defined goal for your next content piece? You may pause the video and write it down now. Okay, but even if you hit that goal of 10,000 views, this is just a passerby relationship. Just as with a person you meet on a train once. How can you make the relationship deeper? Simple. You meet them again. No matter where or how, another intentional meeting will deepen your relationship. It is the same in content. Offer them a call to action in your content to further the relationship. It may be a PDF, ebook, another content piece, or anything else. For example, I often put a call to action to download a PDF which explains how to get 10 free audiobooks at the end of my videos, which then requires subscription. Then, the objective is to send emails and build a true relationship with mutual feelings with you guys. Until one day, I may actually have a product that may improve your lives. And then, some more mails, and then another product, and repeat. In Chapley's words, good content always has an objective. It's created with intent. It, therefore, carries triggers to action. What is the call to action for your next content piece? You may pause the video now and write it down. Content rule one is build momentum. When talking about the first rule in this summary, I could have left it at the explanation of putting a precise goal of 10,000 views versus the unclear goal of a video going viral. But instead, I also mentioned the four visitors and one subscriber goal that I've set. This is real life application. 
instead of just a theoretic explanation. In Chapley's words, good content doesn't preach or hard sell. Instead, it shows how your product lives in the real world. Do you think that when you create your own content, you could do the same? Could you show how you apply or have applied the principles in your real life? If so, how exactly are you going to do it? You may pause the video and answer that question now. Content rule 2 is show. Don't just tell. After leaving a lovely comment on my video, I checked out Paul's channel, Advanced Ideas, and saw that in his video, Functional Training for Real People, he's advertising a course on the subject of functional training, which he himself created. I then thought it's a great example of building momentum, which is the first rule I presented here. And that is because he created his video with a clear goal and CTA. People checking out his functional fitness course and enrolling in it. In another case, the last video of Domingo Jaramillo was made two years ago. Um, where you at, brother? It is a classical how-to technical guide for installing support for the GPU component in his computer which is inherently a really real-life example, which is an application of the second rule in this video. What I'm really trying to say is that we have the option to engage with our audience, and we very well should. That is, if we want to create a living, breathing relationship. Showcasing your audience, as I've just done, is one option for that. But there are other options too. For example, reacting to their comments on your content. Commenting on their content and hosting a group call to name a few. Or, in Chapley's words, like a good campfire, good content sparks interaction and ignites conversation between you and your customers. And among your customers, themselves. So, what is one way in which you are going to engage with your audience in the next content piece? You may pause the video now and write it down. Content rule 3 is Stoke the Campfire. Thank you for watching, Improvementers. Here's my CTA for you for today. I have included a short worksheet with the three rules I've just discussed with blank fields for you to fill out. The link for downloading it is in the description. See you in the next videos, Improvementers. And as David Goggins, the retired Navy SEAL, says, stay hard.